in this recording we're going to talk about these two things we'll talk about the monopoly profit maximization uh, point and that monopolist is never going to operate at the inelastic portion of the demand curve that's what we're going to do so to maximize profits a monopoly is going to choose to produce at the point where re marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost we we'll prove this a monopoly will choose to produce at a point at which MR is equal to MC, right? Guys, what is your profit? Profit is revenue minus cost, right? Say the inverse demand function is this, P is equal to FQ. Revenue is what? P into Q, right? P into Q minus cost. Cost is also the function of this guy. So, in place of P, you can write FQ into Q minus CQ, something like this. Huh? You can write like this. Now, just differentiate this with respect to Q. First function as it is into derivative of second function plus second function as it is into derivative of first function f dash q minus c dash q equal to zero minus c dash q equals to zero something like this right so what is this beta this is nothing but your marginal revenue you've done this in the earlier recordings too this guy mm -hmm. This guy is nothing but the marginal revenue, right? And the C dash Q is what? This is what your marginal cost is. Uh, the C dash Q is what? This is what your marginal cost is. Uh, so at optimum, MR is equal to MC. At optimum, MR is equal to MC. Other thing, other thing is monopoly is facing a downward sloping demand curve. Unlike your perfect competition, which is facing a flat horizontal uh, demand curve, monopoly is facing a downward sloping demand curve. So also, Monopoly faces a negatively sloped demand curve. And because of that, marginal revenue is less than price. And what do you mean by this? You remember this? TR is nothing but equal to P into Q. MR is nothing but DTR by DQ. Right? So it is what? First function as it is into derivative of Q with respect to Q. That is derivative of second function with respect to Q is 1. Plus second function as it is into derivative of first function with respect to Q is this. Fair enough. Now think about it, because dp by dq is negative, why because demand
demand curve is negatively sloped. Right, negatively, I'm so sorry, negatively sloped. Uh, so if this is negatively sloped, beta, so this is this guy is positive, P is strictly positive. So just think about it. Your MR is equal to P minus something. Minus something. So P has to be greater than MR. Na? So MR you are getting by reducing something from P. So that would mean what? That MR is less than price. MR is less than price. What do you mean by this? It means this, that if you want to sell the additional unit of output, you will have to reduce the price on all the earlier units also in order to sell that marginal print. So please write that to sell. An additional unit of output the monopoly must lower its price on all units to be sold, right? If it is to generate the extra demand. If it is to generate the extra demand necessary to absorb, this marginal unit. Necessary to absorb this marginal unit. So you're saying that earlier you were producing like five units at five rupees per unit. Now you want to sell, let's say sixth unit. Now for the monopolist, he would have to reduce the price, let's say to 4.5 per unit. But that 4.5 per unit is not only for the sixth unit, but also for the earlier five units as well. Yeah, P or Q demand your marginal revenue. Demand is nothing but your price, right? Marginal revenue. I'm drawing my AC like this. And through the minimum of AC, MC is cutting like this. Okay. And uh, da, 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 da. Hmm? So MC equals to MR is at this point. Okay. That means it is the optimal. We have just seen that. You take this at Q star. I mean, if you want to produce Q star, then what should be the price? According to your demand function, this should be the price. For this Q star, what should be your cost? Your average cost? This guy. So we have shown, we have shown the case for a profit. This area is what the profit is. This area is what the profit is. I mean, you can also think of like this. So profit is nothing but price minus average cost into Q. That's what your profits are. That's what your profits are. So this is what my optimal condition is. So at this particular point, 
m c equals to a r. Also, you have shown m r is less than twice. Huh? Okay. Then the other thing you want to show that monopolist is never going to operate at the inelastic portion of the demand curve. Right. This is the second thing which you want to show that monopolist is never going to operate at the inelastic portion of the demand curve. So let me just write my MR again, which I've just written above, which is P plus Q into DP by DQ. Right. Okay. Can I take P common? I can. One plus Q by P. DP by DQ. Right. Yes, you remember now that how do you write the elasticity? Percentage change in quantity demanded upon the percentage change in price. So percentage change in quantity demanded is going to be what? DQ by Q. Percentage change in price is going to be what? DB by P. So how do you write this? dq by q into p by dp you write it like this so how do you write this dq by dp into p by q so this is what my elasticity is so one upon elasticity is going to be what q upon p into dp by dq you know so one upon elasticity is going to be what this guy But the point is that, uh, just get rid of him. But the point is that elasticity is always a negative number. Elasticity of demand is a negative number. So can I write it like this? No, because elasticity of demand is naturally negative. So can I write it like this? Hmm? Can I write it like this? But at the optimal, MR is equal to MC. I can also write like this. So this is MR. And this is equal to MC, right? So basically your P minus P into one minus one upon uh, this absolute of elasticity is equal to MC, right? Now the point is, just think about it. If, if monopolis is going to operate at the inelastic portion, so inelastic demand is what? Modulus of E less than one, right? Modulus of E less than one is there. That is inelastic demand. Now, if modulus of E is less than one, then one upon modulus of E is going to be greater than one, right? If one upon modulus of E is greater than one, then this guy, which is the MR, this is the MR, na? MR is equal to what? P into one minus one upon modulus of elasticity. So this is going to be less than zero, na? because one minus one upon modulus of elasticity is greater than one. So this is less than zero. I mean, why would you operate at a point where MR is negative? So it can't possibly, and you have to put MR equal to MC. MC is positive. So negative of MR, how can that be equal to positive MC? So it can't possibly
be equal to MC. Okay. Let's look at the another explanation. Think about it. If you've done uh, that case, now, if modulus of elastic, if modulus of E is less than one, then how can you increase the revenue by decreasing the output? This is the total expenditure method of elasticity of demand. Then decrease in output will increase revenues, right? When output is decreasing, total cost is also going to decrease. Right? So decrease in output will increase revenue. Decrease in output will decrease cost. So in a way, you are saying that decrease in output will increase profits, right? Uh, so profits will necessarily increase by decreasing output. Why do you want to produce at that point? So for does any point where modulus of E is less than one that cannot possibly be an equilibrium point, right? That cannot be a profit maximizing point, does? any point where modulus of E is less than one. Can't be profit maximizing, right? For a monopolist. For a monopolist, since it could increase its profit by reducing the output. Increase profits by reducing the output. Right. So what it follows that the prop, I mean, modulus of E less than one cannot be the point of profit maximization. So what it follows is that the, at the point of profit maximization, modulus of E should be greater than equal to one. Right. It follows that. Follows that. A point where profits are maximized can only occur at modulus of E greater than or equal to one. So this is what I wanted to do in this recording beta. Uh, this is what I wanted to do in this recording, where you have the monopolist profit maximization condition and monopolist will never op operate at inelastic portion of the demand curve. Thank you.